Hey guys, welcome back to this channel. This is Betty Girl, where we talk about self-love, self-work, and self-worth. My name is Roshni, and let's jump into this video. So I wanted to do kind of a different, more casual video. I just wanted to sit down and talk to you guys about stuff, and if you like this type of video, I'm going to probably make this a series because it's been something I've wanted to try for a while. Um, but let's just get into it. So today I actually wanted to talk about self-sabotage and how this is something that I've definitely talked about on my channel a lot. I also um, made a free PDF a while ago on um, self-sabotage and like how to basically use art in different mediums of journaling, different prompts, and art as well to work through some of the self-sabotage you have, recognize how it's formed in your life, how to recognize some of the patterns that you might not be aware of. So if you are interested, like I said, it's free. You can download it in the description below. I'll leave that link for you guys. Um, but other than that, it is something that I've talked about a lot and something that I've struggled with in the past. So in the past, like I mentioned also on this channel, you know, I was a big partier. I was really into like going out and having fun and having a good time. And while I was still planning for my future and doing big things, I was also in a lot of ways just focused on like what I was going to do over the weekend. And that was kind of like my priority a lot of the time, as much as I hate to say it. And I've changed so much since those times. Like I'm basically a completely different person from those years in terms of like my habits and my priorities and what I have fun doing. Um, but I think it's, it's interesting because my self-sabotage has kind of manifested and changed roots a little bit and is kind of different. So now instead of going out of my way to like get drunk or get, you know, be hungover on like an important day or, you know, doing something like that or just doing something embarrassing that I regret later, that's not really what I, what happens as much. But, but I feel like now the method that it takes on is more like me not realizing how great my life is. So before I felt like there were so many things always going wrong and, you know, for a part of my childhood that was true. You know, there were times that uh, my family just really struggled or, you know, with me having to move to a new country and assimilate, there was a lot of struggle in that. There was a lot of, obviously, struggle in being bullied and not fitting in and things like that that I've also talked about on this channel before. But, um, you know, a lot of it was just finding difficulty, not being able to relate to the people that I was growing up around, especially financially, um, even more than anything else. I didn't really have what everyone else had, and I grew up without a lot of things, or I was kind of late to getting a lot of things, um, and with, you know, just the area that I grew up, it was like a very affluent area, and because it was like kind of one extreme, and I was sort of on the other side of it, it wasn't something that everyone necessarily even knew about me, but it was something that I tried to keep to myself as much as possible, and so obviously that was kind of hard to deal with, um, especially for, you know, just how young I was at the time, and so that kind of carried on, and then even in college there were a lot of things that I couldn't do because I couldn't afford it, um, tuition went up, and so one year I was actually not even sure if I was going to be able to be enrolled because I was there on a full scholarship, and because tuition went up and my scholarship didn't, I like didn't even know if I could stay in college. Um, there were things with like roommates and stuff that I had my freshman year that were like bad and like dramatic and filled with terrible like situations. And there was just so much going on at different times in my life that it wasn't always happy. I was also dealing with depression in my teenage years. Um, I lost my grandma, which was a huge part of my life. And um, she was really important to me. So, you know, there was a long series of years where through a lot of my teenage years and my college years, I was just kind of running into one bad thing after another, dealing with, you know, family issues and financial issues, and then also having to worry about a job. And, you know, I was just kind of all over the place. And I was managing a lot, and I am proud of myself for that. But because of all of that chaos, I kind of didn't know what to do in my life once that chaos was minimized. You know, once I graduated college, I was able to get an actual full-time job instead of piecing together little part-time jobs. I was able to work full-time, which obviously helped me get a lot more money and having a college degree helped with that as well. Um, and now I also live on my own, so I don't have like crazy roommate problems or things like that. Um, and you know, there's just so much in my life that's just calm. And I've also, you know, cut out a lot of the relationships in my life that were extremely dramatic and filled with, you know, self-doubt and me just judging myself or feeling bad about who I am because of what other people in my life have or are doing or are saying that I can't do. You know what I mean? I, I kind of gave up all the relationships in my life that put me down. And 
um, because of all of that, that in itself was a huge amount of growth in my life, but because of all of that change, I, it happened so quickly and I didn't get to like fully catch up to it emotionally, I guess. So even though my life looked different, I still kind of felt the same on the inside. And that was a lot of the work that I did, you know, over the last couple of years. But I think some of that residual work that's left over is that even though I stopped all my bad habits and I'm not, you know, sabotaging in that like really obvious outward way anymore, I'm sabotaging by not realizing how great my life is and not being able to fully enjoy it. Like on a day-to-day -day basis, I have so much anxiety about the smallest little things, you know, like running out of groceries or the house not being clean or how much work I have to do or feeling like I have to be stressed about stressed about making videos or feeling like I have to, you know, run errands when I don't want to do anything. And it's like all these little things. I'm like making like these big struggles and these big mountains out of them. But it's really honestly a blessing to be able to get in my car and know I have enough money to go run an errand and grab something that I need. It's a blessing to be able to know that all I have to do to get more food or more groceries is run to the grocery store. It's a blessing to know that you know, I can stress about different bills and things like that because I know that at the end of the day, I can pay them off at, like when it comes down to it, you know what I mean? So there's so many different things where it's like at the end of the day, there's not really a problem here, but in my mind, it's like focusing and trying to find some sort of problem and something wrong. And that's the worst feeling ever. And I didn't really realize how much I was doing it. But now that I realize it, I think it's just this kind of morphing into this weird other form that's basically just not letting me live my life to the fullest and not letting me actually accept that my life is great even though I've built it so that it can be great. You know, I built my life so that I can spend weekends with friends if I want to or I can spend them alone. I have creative outlets. I have, you know, I have things that I do that are outside. I have friends that I can catch up with if I want to. Like, I never really feel like I'm that bored or that at a loss of something to do like that's something that I haven't felt for a very very long time and these are all blessings these are all things that I hoped for in life and now that it's here I'm not letting myself enjoy it and so I've actually been kind of angry at myself about that and I think that's what's also caused this dissonance and this anger and this passive aggression that I've been feeling and dealing with I've been like not really sure how to accept how great things are but then because of that I get angry at myself and all of this is happening subconsciously so I'm just kind of lashing out and trying to find problems or trying to change things and trying to be impulsive but it's like I don't need anything else I don't need anything more I don't have to have my life change but at the same time if it did change I would be okay and I just need to really let go and separate myself from that so I wanted to share this message with you in case that's something that you know you do and the other thing is that we all know we need to be positive we all know we need to think good thoughts and that we need to be happy and that we need to push ourselves out of our comfort zone and we all know that we are scared sometimes and you know if you're in the personal growth world at all or even if you're not you've probably heard all these things a million times you know you need to challenge yourself step out of your comfort zone be different, be fearless, etc. And those are all great messages. But what I've really realized over the last few years is that it's a conscious thought to be grateful. And it's a conscious effort to be grateful as well. And it's something that you genuinely have to work at because we all know that, you know, we should write down three things that we're grateful for, or, you know, that it's important to focus on that, or it's important to have happy thoughts, but it's harder to actually do that. And at the end of the day, we all get frustrated. We all get angry. We all get either passive aggressive or lash out sometimes. And, you know, we have to figure out why we have to get to the bottom of that and figure out what exactly is going on. And again, I don't believe that there are negative emotions, but I do think that obviously if you're lashing out all the time, there's a reason for that. And so you should be able to correct the reason because maybe your anger is justified because of what you're going through, but that means that you need to change what you're going through or you need to ask for help or find a way to get through that situation or get over that hurdle. So that was the main thing that I wanted to share is that it really is something that you have to focus on and work on and be intentional about. And a good example that I like to bring up is that I actually studied NLP, which is Neuro Linguistic Programming. I have a few video, a few, I have a few videos about that on my channel as well. And it's really interesting. And one of the examples that I love to use is like, 
it's really interesting how much confirmation bias we really have going on in our minds at all times. And I like to use the example of like walking through a grocery store, basically. So we, you know, are walking through a grocery store, you're just doing your thing, walking down the aisle, and someone looks at you and kind of like looks you up and down and does like a double take. And on the one side, you know, if you feel like you have a great outfit on that day, if you feel like your makeup is on point, if you feel like you're looking sharp, like you're ready for this. You're like, yes, like they definitely checked me out. It's cool. I'm not going to talk to them, but that's what just happened. They checked me out. That's why they did the double take. Whereas on the other hand, if you feel like everyone's out to get you and the world hates you and you're just waiting for another person to like steer you wrong and everyone's just around to betray you, you might think that they're like sizing you up or like judging you or looking at how disgusting your outfit is. You could have any number of thoughts go through your mind about yourself on a daily basis so that when someone looks at you you're instantly like wow I'm attractive or you're like wow I have a disgusting outfit on wow this person wants to fight me wow this person is judging me I'm always being judged you know what I mean so whatever we're automatically thinking that's what we're gonna see every single day and if you're confirming to yourself 20 or 30 times a day during different situations that you know you are you are ugly or you're unattractive or you're not fun or people don't want to be around you or people are just out to hurt you or you're never going to make any money or you're not trustworthy. If you allow that to be confirmed on a daily basis, especially subconsciously, that's doing so much damage over the long term because you're literally telling yourself those things without even realizing it and you're just deepening that thought about yourself more and more and more. You're just adding more reasons to that bucket of why you should believe that thought. Whereas if you, whereas you have to work twice as hard to think the opposite thing and to be positive, but then once you do, that becomes what you truly believe. And one of the ways that I see that in my life is actually my thoughts about money. So I've done a lot of work on my idea with money, my relationship with money. I've journaled on it. I've worked on savings, I've worked on, you know, retirement accounts and learning about things. I've learned about how to manage it. I've learned about how to acquire it. I've learned about different emotional impacts that money can have, um, money and, and kind of the emotional impact of power on money. So there's so much work that I've done in my own life in studying how it has affected other people and other people's stories. Um, so that's something that I've just been really interested in. And Especially with, you know, like I said, earning so much more than I was in college or in high school, obviously, now that I've graduated, it's been a complete kind of 180 for me on the money journey. And yes, I could still be earning much more. I'm probably not even earning as much as a lot of millennials out there. But at the same time, it's something that has been such a huge jump for me. And that amount of growth was amazing. But if I hadn't done some of that money work, I could have, you know, easily spent it all on stuff I didn't need or found ways to waste it or still found myself in some sort of credit card debt. Um, you know, there's so many things that I could have done regardless of the amount of money that I was making if I hadn't gotten my perspective around money right. And I was able to do that because I was intentionally journaling on it. I was, you know, listening to podcasts about money. I was thinking and looking at my accounts on a daily or, you know, every other day kind of basis. I was checking in and I was making those decisions and really kind of getting down and dirty in the weeds of everything. And when I did that and when I read books about it and looked at other people's stories and listened to podcasts, I realized what is really possible for me and how much of it comes from my ideas on it. And I don't even realize it until now when I hear someone talk bad about money, whether it's in a comment section online or whether it's in person, I can spot a negative money energy or a negative money kind of mindset anywhere. And that's because of how much work I've done to correct my own money mindset. So now when that red flag goes up in my head, I'm like, oh, okay, I you know, I, I realize how far I've come because that's exactly how I used to think not even two years ago. And so for me to now realize when other people are thinking that way and how they could correct their thoughts and how they could tweak their perspective to be a little bit more positive or to attract a little bit more money into their life, that's when I'm like, oh my God, I really have changed and my like subconscious thoughts, my deep beliefs really are different because I can recognize where I've come from. I can recognize other people's thoughts and how I don't think that anymore and how I truly don't believe that as my instinctual reaction to respond to what they're saying. And so I know that it's possible, but 
with, you know, realizing how good your life is, you, we all kind of get caught in this idea of wanting to be humble or wanting to be the martyr and wanting to, you know, sacrifice for other people and wanting to be everything for everyone else, but nothing for ourselves. And that's not okay. Like, it's not doing anyone any favors to do things for them and to not give yourself anything back in return because at the end of the day you're going to wither yourself away you're going to end up either being resentful or putting pressure on them to take care of you or you're going to have just lost yourself and lost your personality and your interests and that zest part of you that loves life and those are kind of the main points that I wanted to talk about just if you're feeling down or if you're feeling really anxious, just allow yourself to think about what is good and allow yourself to bask in that. You don't have to be humble in your journal when you're writing about what's great in your life. You don't have to be humble when you're recording a voiceover or making a video on your phone just talking to yourself. You can brag about how great your life is and you can be grateful for it and you can love it and nothing is wrong with that. It's okay to be absolutely head over heels in love with your life and I think so many of us feel like that's wrong and I want to put that message out there that it's okay. We need more people that love their life. We need more people that are so satisfied and so content and so filled up with their life that they're willing to then do something for someone else or they're willing to, you know, help other people along the way or they're willing to bring other people up with that absolute joy that they bring to every situation in their life. And that's really just what I wanted to share and what I wanted to talk about with you today. I will be back with more regular videos next week. I had some tech issues, so hopefully that'll be fixed and we'll be back on schedule as usual. And otherwise, I have been really active on Instagram. I've been posting there um, daily, so if you want to get in contact or if you want to hang out with me a little bit more, that is a way to do it. I will put the link up here and in the description below. And otherwise, I will see you all next week. Happy healing!